my subject of teaching today is tongue. Amen? Tongue. Is there anybody here who doesn't have a tongue? <laughs> as long as you are a human, an animal as it is called in science, a mammal as it is called, you have a tongue. Amen? Have we ever thanked God for the tongue? It's high time we start thanking God for the tongue. It, tongue has its general definition and characteristics. What makes it is what we are looking at first. Tongue is the flexible muscular organ situated in the mouth of any mammal. That thing you have in your mouth, <laughs> the red one, <laughs> the pink one, the one which you usually pull out whenever you feel like, the one that you see when I pull it out, is what we call tongue. Amen? There may be some other things in the mouth, but that is tongue. And that's what I'm going to talk about. It is primarily used for testing moving food, leaking, swallowing, sound modification or articulating speech in humans, and for capturing food in certain animals such as frogs and chameleons. It is so interesting when you look at a chameleon or a frog eating. Isn't that amazing? How many of us have ever seen a chameleon feeding? It captures. It is interesting. People struggle to look for what to eat. When it comes to eating, you may not be able to do it, especially when you have some kind of ill health. You are not all that, feeling strong. But for a frog, for a chameleon, Whatever distance something is, it captures it. Amen? So, looking at this, we see that a tongue being a structure that God created to be in our mouth has a lot of functions. We have always used it for testing unknowingly. You put sugar in the mouth, you say, wow, yes, that sugar is good. Put in some more. Put in little. If you want to move food in the mouth, unknowingly, I'm using the word unknowingly, but scientifically there is a word they use for some of the things that function in our bodies that we are not aware of. You've never taken note of how a heart beats, how many times it beats, but it does. How the tongue moves food, but thank God it does. However big the food is, is in, in your mouth, it does it. Isn't that amazing? Tongue leaks. Okomba. <laughs> Okununa. Whatever you call it, it does it. It helps us to swallow. Scientifically, when you put food in the mouth, you chew. When it is chewed, it may be a big amount, but the tongue does its job to roll it along, around into a ball form and it is swallowed. Amen? That is all about God. I'm talking about tongue. It is measured from the back of the throat to the tip. According to its length, it is 10 centimeters long. We've never thought about that. But one thing we know, we have a tongue. Amen? This is a centimeter. On your finger, this one is a centimeter. So if you measure it into ten times, that is the length of your tongue. Scientifically. The tongue begins in the back of the mouth and it is anchored into a strong bone. Its name is called a hyoid. But let's it take it to be a bone. Whoever is considered a strong person, however much he may try to pull out somebody's tongue, 
may not be able to. Just because God fixed it somewhere with a small, strong bone which holds it to do whatever it does. Tongue has thousands of tests. When I was reading deep into this, when you pull out your tongue, it has some small, small structures which are raised. Hmm? Each one of them is a testy bird. If you were to count them, they are countless. But they tell us in science that they all represent a test. But what we know, we have four tests. Sweet, sour, bit, and salty. Thank God. David talks about God in Psalms 139 verse 14. That I thank you God because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? If we just look at that small part of our body tongue, we are wonderfully and fearfully made. Can you help me to project James chapter 3, verses 1 up to 12? We shall be very, very fast to read this. And we look at the biblical characteristics of tongue. What we've been looking at is the general one, the biological, the science one, but now we are looking at the Bible. Oh, so it means what we look at, what we know from our perspective is even in the Bible, yes. Okay, I'm reading. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouth of horses, we make them obey us. We can turn the whole animal. All take sheep as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person sets the whole course of his life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord, the Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Amen. Characteristics of tongue, according to that, it is fire. Amen. Fire, just imagine what fire is. It is a something that is within us, that helps us to perform our duties as human beings, live alone the animals. But inside our mouth, there is that thing which is called fire. That is its characteristic. It's the world of evil among the parts of the body. I'm just trying to make this specific. It's the world of evil among the parts of the body. We read from, uh, from, Corinth, from Romans that Paul was urging us as his brothers and sisters 
in view of God's mercy to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, pleasing to God. And he ends by saying, this is your spiritual act of worship. Many times as believers, we have said, if not that we have done what we call worship. Amen? We worship by putting up our hands, by bowing, by kneeling, whatever you do it. But the Bible talks about worship. That if you offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. Tongue was created by God. It is one of the parts of our bodies. Leave all the other parts of the body. They have their functions. There is a way they are talked about in the Bible. But today, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you and me about that small thing which is in your mouth, which is tongue. It is the world of evil among other parts of the body. Now, what should we do? Should we pull it out so that we don't contain that world of evil? And by the word world, I was trying to think about it. World is a big word. Amen? It means there are several, several evils contained in a tongue. But it is in our mouth. And it is functional. We are using it every now and then. It is helping us, thank God. But it is also fire. It corrupts the whole person. As I'm standing before you, I may look so beautiful, I may be so useful, I may be so friendly, but by that time, I may be so corrupt. Amen? Amen? That is another characteristic. It sets you on fire. It being fire itself, it can set you on fire. There, is, there are some Bibles where it talks about it, that it's like you get a matchstick, you light it on the matchbox, and you start the fire. It can burn the whole world. That is fire. That is tongue. It can't be tamed. You can never tame it. We've tried to tame everything that we have. A husband may say, I have my children. I try to co control them. I try to guide them. I try to do this and that. I have my wife. When she goes astray, I do this. I may say, I have my husband. When he's going astray, I do this. But that small thing, I can't tell it because of its characteristics. It's full of deadly poison. With it, we praise our Lord and Father. Our Lord and Father. We praise all the time. We talk good about our Lord and Father because it helps us. In its characteristics, the general ones, there was a major one which was for sound modification all articulating speech. If I didn't have a tongue, brothers and sisters, you wouldn't be hearing any word from me, right? I can't hear anything from you if it wasn't so. But then, with that major function, it is a deadly one. With it, we cast men who have been made in God's image. So, tongue is good. Tongue is bad. Tongue is useful. I'll not say tongue is useless. But it is functional. And it is within us. Inside our mouth. It is part of our body. The Bible has told us in the book of First Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 to 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, oh, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, you are not your own. Our body, with everything that we have, 
is God is. Whatever is inside, we don't know. We come to know what it is when we are not having good health. The stomach has some kind of upset. That's when you say, oh, my stomach. I have a headache. God controls everything because all is his. But he says in our body is his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. In the body, even where the tongue is. Amen? In the body which Paul urges us to offer as a living sacrifice. Worthy and acceptable. Holy and acceptable before God. That's the body where our tongue is. How are we going to do it? We are human. We cannot tame it. God gives us the grace. Amen? God gives us the grace. When we look um, in that very chapter where we've been, we are not going there. We have already read it, read it. It has said we all stumble and fall. The good news I have, ladies and gentlemen, is that much as we stumble and fall, the Holy Spirit is there to be our friend. The Holy Spirit is there to be our guide. He's our counselor. He's the next, if I could say, of kin. Many times, wherever you go, you are asked when you are feeling forms next of kin, just in a case. Hmm? You put there, do you know what you think about? I'm putting my best friend who is my husband. I'm putting my wife. I'm putting my best child, favorite child. But our next should be the Holy Spirit. Because that is what Jesus gave us. When he was leaving his disciples, he said, I'm leaving. But I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. Who will comfort you? Who will encourage you? Who will be with you? Who will lead your way? If the Holy Spirit is in us and our bodies are the temples of God, let's give room to the Holy Spirit to guide us as we walk in this body. This morning when I was praying about this teaching, I was trying to imagine how the life of a human being or anybody is. You were born, come out of the mother's womb, naked. Amen? You live on earth as soon as you come, even before you come, we hold baby showers here. During our time, we didn't know who we are holding a baby shower for. They were not there even. <laughs> Once you buy one nappy, which you call diapers, you buy one sheet, Whatever, simple, simple things. You go on assumptions. If he's a boy, if she's a girl. Thank God they are all children. And we used it to be, to make a good choice. For me, for a boy or a girl, I could choose yellow in between. Because I know, by the way, where did we get that? Where did we adapt it that boys have to wear blue, girls have to wear pink? <laughs> Whatever. It is addressing. But I could pick yellow just in case. Now when the baby comes, pink for a girl, blue for a boy, right? But that human comes naked. As soon as he comes out, he's dressed. You live on earth dressed. You change whichever kind of design you want. The body is God's. You are dressing up, you are clothing because you want to honor God. But I'm telling you, God knows you all. God knows me all. When you are in your bathroom, that's the moment when you should think of how great our God is. You may want to lock your door so that no child comes in. Even your husband may not be needed there. Even your wife may not be needed there. But God knows it all. And at the final stage of your life, you go back the way you came. 
Job talks about it. We come with nothing. We go with nothing. There is an illustration, I don't know whether it's biblical, that the reason why people are laid flat when they die and the hands are like this is to ensure that you didn't come with anything so you shouldn't take anything. I don't know whether it's true. But don't you think it's real? Yeah. You have no control. Let's come back to our senses. When you are on earth, you try to use your body as your own. My body, I have to do this. Whatever it takes me, whatever I have to do, is what you do. But when that time comes, you came with nothing, you go with nothing. Even when the head has done this, some too strong men have to put it right to make sure where you are going, you are ready for it. Amen? <laughs> we all stumble and fall, but God requires us to keep our whole body in check. The tongue is just a part of our body, but God requires us. That is James 2, 3, 2, to check our whole body. There is somewhere in the Bible where it says all our parts of the body work together. And that's a reality. When the nose is sick, the eye is affected. When the eye is sick, the nose, the mouth, everything is affected, right? Now, if it's only one tongue, which is fire, which is a deadly poison, which is dangerous the way it has been talked about, it means we have to keep our whole body how are we going to do it? We are not doctors. We are not God. But we have the Holy Spirit, our closest friend who can enable us. Have we allowed God to take control of our tongue? That's a question. It's a challenge to you and me. As you do whatever you do, you may dress up so well, you may look humble, you may speak softly, you may be so kind, you may show you are so loving, but that thing in you, in your mouth, how have you used it? Have you allowed God to have control over it? Because he created it. It is his. I was trying to think of just in case. One day God decided to remove the other bone we've looked at, which holds the tongue at the back. What will happen? It will come out because he has control over it. Supposing you put food in the mouth and the tongue gets stuck somehow. Will the food go down? No. No. And if it stops roaring itself to send the food down, will you swallow it? No. You have no control. Leave it to God. As you leave your tongue to God, leave the whole body to God. Because when you are coming, you came naked. He knew about you. When you are going, you will go naked. He knows about you. How do we use our tongue, which is part of our body? Do we realize the positive and negative ways we use our tongue? Leave alone the functions we've seen. It helps me to eat. It helps me to chew. It helps me to swallow. It helps me to taste. There is another way you and I use the tongue in a positive way or a negative way. I'm just giving examples, but there could be some others. When we were beginning, we read about not all of us should assume to be teachers. It doesn't necessarily mean that a professional teacher should teach. Even a non-professional can teach. But there is a caution about it. There is a way we use our tongue to teach. Assuming I'm teaching. I'm talking to my children. You have to do this and this and this. Because of this and this and this. The reason is this, this. You reason. You get a good place to teach, to talk to somebody, either an elder or a young one, assuming you are teaching. That is a positive way, assuming. We can use it thinking we are training. 
we can use it thinking we are guiding, counseling, correcting, disciplining, advising, empathizing, and sympathizing, expressing concern. I'm just giving some two examples about expressing concern. Somebody talks about Catherine in Suvga. I tell you what, did you hear what happened to Catherine? What? Tell me. The tongue is more than ready. Right? Tell me what? As soon as it's ready, the ears are ready, the eyes are wide open. You can even move a step near somebody who is going to tell you. You see how you are all affected? Hmm? Tell me what? Oh, no, I think I'll tell you. Tell me. Tell me. Hmm? You try to pester somebody to tell you. You are using your tongue to capture that person's attention. Trying, the one telling you is trying to show she or he is expressing concern. Hmm. We have to pray for Sister Catherine. I tell you what. It is so sad. That woman you always see her doing this and that. And have you ever known? Now you are bringing the encyclopedia about what happened to that person. Are you expressing concern? Or you are trying to use your tongue the way you think is the right way. That is the positive way we think we use our tongue. Empathy is being in somebody's shoes. If I give you my shoes and their boots, they may not fit you depending on the size. But if you are really empathizing with me, you can say whether it fits me or not, let me feed it in. Okay? You know how it is when it is so tight. But because you are empathizing with me, you'll bear it. Even if it's not the right size, for the case of Catherine, let me walk in it. But it is really pressing. That is empathizing. How many times have we pretended to be empathizing for others when we are really not? Sympathizing, Bambi. Bambi, um, Chalo, eh, Chitalo. Chibi nyo nyo matu saate geira kubango. Mi wami weba atu gamba ya mureka ye Uganda na yate kakate tu. After there, you go to next person. Tell you what. She doesn't have a, a, a husband. She's just lying. You've sympathized with her. You are talking another thing beside. That is the positive way, positive way we think we use that term. Negative way. The Bible talks about this. We use it to rebuke. Why would, we, why would we rebuke one another? Unless it is really necessary. We curse. There is the cursing I grew up knowing, which is talked about in the Bible. But there is a curse I'm concerned about, which is called swear here in this country. Why do we use such languages? You hear others curse, you curse. You hear others swear, you swear. Pretending you are an American, I'm speaking American English. It offends people. It offends me. I have my culture, right? And I have my culture as a Christian. Much as you want to speak American English, you want to do what others are doing. You are offending your fellow brother and sister using your tongue. We use it to condemn. We use it to judge. We use it to gossip. We use it to slander. Slander. Nukusala ganyebi gambo. Nachi ulide bubani. Nchi ulide walu samu. Nchi tute at the end of it, if you are to ask, by the way, what is the source of all of this information? X told me, when you ask X, I got it from Z. When you follow that trend, they got it from nowhere. Why should you do that? You and me do it. Using our tongue. You discriminate. This one doesn't belong here. I don't belong there. I don't talk to this one. I think you are watching my tongue. Hmm? I don't belong to that group. I like only this one and this one and this one. 
What are you talking about? That one is not in our group. Discrimination. Everywhere we are. Visitors come in our houses. We discriminate them. Some people are well fed when they visit your houses. Others are nobody. Are they fasting? Did I tell you I'm fasting when I came to visit your house? Give me food the way you give it to another person. That's what God requires us to do. I'll bless you. Amen? Talk to me the way you talk to others. Love me. Be kind to me. Don't discriminate me. I think you know how painful it is. I'm a person who loves children. God gave me the grace to have my own children. God gave me the grace to work in places where there are children, being a teacher. And before I came here, I worked in an orphanage for seven years. I know what it means to love and to be loved. Why don't we love one another? By the fact, by the fact that an individual is called an orphan, love that person. Don't mind whether he's an old person or a young one. He needs love. Many of us have not talked about ourselves. Somebody may have, may have a story and tell you, I never saw my mother. That person is missing that thing. I'm a mother. Why don't I love that person as a mother? Instead of doing all kinds of things, using my tongue. There's a negative way we use our tongue. There's a positive way we use our tongue. But James chapter 3 verse 2 has told us, we all stumble and fall, but God requires us to keep our whole body in check. Check your whole body. Because the tongue will affect the whole body. When we read James chapter 3 verse 1, it says, Not many of us should presume to be teachers because we know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. You do it in the umbrella of teaching. I'm teaching. You know when I talk to that person, it is some kind of counseling. If you are counseling, do it genuinely. Don't go behind him. And you start, you start talking. Counselors keep secrets. Hmm? When you talk to me, and I know it is counseling time, I tell you I can never share that information. But if you are counseling, why do you share it with other people? Therefore, not all of us should be teachers if you think you are teaching. Not all of us should be counselors if you think you are counseling. Not all of us should be judges. That's why we never trained you to be judges. We are just living by the grace of God. Amen. Psalms 143, verse 10. You may not open that. King David said, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. It's my prayer that we all pray to God to teach us to do his will. Because, because when we have his Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit communicates with him about you because he loves you. If you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, to do his work in you, he will be communicating to the Father so that you learn to do God's will. As I conclude, you and I, regardless of what age, what status, you may be highly educated, or very low, or nothing at all. You may be beautiful, more than beautiful. You may be handsome, more than handsome. It doesn't matter. We've heard we have many judges. I'm a judge. Judges tend to know more because they are experienced. But this regards us. If you're a parent, 
teach your children to obey God, to offer their body as a living sacrifice. But you will not be able to teach them unless you have offered your body as a living sacrifice. Parents, we are examples, right? We should set good examples for our children. If your children see you talking, 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 slandering, discriminating, doing this, that's what they will copy. Sometimes children are watching. <laughs> there are a lot of things I have studied about children. They look at you, especially those very young ones. You talk, 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 talk. He moves his eyes. After as he says, mm, mm. <laughs> he moves away. Within, I think those characteristics are mostly in girls. After a while, he comes back. You've received a visitor. When you were talking, talking, you were talking about Catherine, right? You didn't know everything is going in her head. Before you know it, Catherine comes. You see it. The girl who comes, the baby girl. Hi, auntie. She knows she's Catherine you are talking about. Now, hey, mommy. Ate wa gambi eto mwagala. Ate wa zengo sanyo se. You are getting my point? They are watching us. Hmm? What example are we exhibiting? They do it. They copy everything. They even organize themselves when they are playing to play games. Tata game, mama game. I'm now mama. The way you behave when you are talking to your husband, they will play you. If you were dad, a boy. Mommy, I want a photo. Because they see daddy doing this, looking for food. Let's be watchful. What do they use? All of their senses, but that tongue projects everything. Let's be wise, humble, and understanding. Let's do everything in humility. That comes from wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5 talks about wisdom. He who lacks wisdom should ask from God. He gives wisdom. And his wisdom, the Bible says, he gives generously to all without finding fault. Whether you are right or wrong, whether you know or you don't know, he gives you wisdom if you ask him. And it will be given to you. That is a promise. Our God is so faithful. He will give us wisdom. He says in chapter 3 verse 17, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. That's why we need that wisdom from God. It is peace loving. The reason why we avoid pick others because we don't love peace. But if you ask for wisdom, you will love in you for peace. It is considerate, it is submissive, it's full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial, it is sincere. All of those are the characteristics of the wisdom that we have to seek from God. James chapter 1 verse 19, he says, My dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Those three things are interrelated. Spe listening, speaking, and becoming angry or reacting to what you have listened to. We have to be very careful. The devil uses it so much. And most times when we are angry, we produce what is out of us or what is in us. You don't have to contribute to every conversation, do you? Let others talk and you keep quiet. You don't lose anything. You don't have to be involved in every talk. Many times we've wanted to contribute to every conversation. We've wanted to fit in everything. You find us having started a conversation like uh, 10 minutes. You bump into it and you say, Mubadewa. <laughs> Why do you want to know what we're doing? Please, it's 
Stay where you are. You don't have to contribute if you don't have to. Hmm? You don't have to open your mouth if you really don't have to. That is word of wisdom. If you are to talk, watch your words. Some of us don't know what to say. Why we have to say it. Who we have to say it to. When we have to say it. Where we have to say it and how. Do you know you and I are arrogant sometimes, if not all times? You are talking about somebody's wife. That is arrogance. Check your words. If somebody is somebody has a big head, you don't have to comment. You never cre created that person. Hmm? Do your business. Mind your business. That is what God wants us to do. Know what to say. You will not know unless you've asked God to give you the wisdom. To keep quiet when you have to keep quiet. To say when you have to say. And to say something to the right person. We have mama, mama Musumba. I respect her. She's my good friend. We've been together for some time and the past. But I'm telling you, the why was brought up. I have a limit. I cannot just come to, to Mrs. and say, Mami, now I can't I don't why I'm bad. I mean, such, such talkings. Let's check ourselves. Whatever, whichever way you say it. I may have come from the saloon. I combed it. The why I did it. If you want to know, if you are concerned, ask me, Mrs., Today, the way you combed your hair, did you like it that way? Let's be wise. If I really didn't comb it well, I can say, how do you say it? Would you like to help? Because some of us don't know how to comb the hair, right? But if you just come in and say, oh, you're not going to be able to do it. Those are some of the examples I'm bringing. Psalms 39, which is the last one. King David was talking about himself in that Psalms. Let's see uh, uh, verse 1. I said I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. You should be aware that wicked are always around us. Put a muzzle on your mouth. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that you are able to be silent. So that you can be able to be quiet for some time. And if not that, be precise if you are to talk. I don't know whether I've taken a lot of time. But if you are to talk, Know what you have to say and how long you should say it. End there. I may be called here to say something. Let's call mm, mm, Catherine to say something. Like to greet. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know the Bible says, you know, I start preaching. Be precise. That is how the tongue has to be. Another verse from that. I'm ending on that. Um, uh, verse yeah, I'm going on to verse 2. These are words from King David. But when I was silent and still, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. Does it really happen to us too? Yes. Now I'm telling you to get a muzzle and tie your lips so that you don't talk. But whenever you keep silent and still, and you don't say anything good, as you think it is good, the anguish increases, right? I would have contributed to that conversation. Now that they were arguing among themselves, I know that I would do it better. But now there is that stop. How do you feel in you? You feel bad. Got three. 
verse 3. My heart grew hot within me. And as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. You see what happens? I'm trying to keep quiet. But I have to talk anyway. And as I keep quiet, I feel something in me. There is some heat in me. The fire burns in me. That's why you see people committing suicide. Why? Because uh, they didn't allow me to talk. I had to say something when we were at our job. Leave the job and go to another job where you will give God glory. If you cannot talk at your job, it means you are not the right person for that, where you are. Amen? I don't mean to say quit your jobs because you cannot talk, but get wisdom. Verse, uh, verse 9. I was silent. I would not open my mouth for you are the one who has done this. Amen? All of those things can happen to you as they happened to King David. Why? Because God does it in you. When you see somebody quiet, it's not because he's a fool. It's not because he doesn't have what to say. But he's giving God room to reign in his life. And it is all well with me when God reigns in me. There are many times when somebody asks you, are you okay? These days I don't understand you. You are so quiet, provoking you, trying to prompt you to speak. If it means keeping quiet for God's glory, you and I should keep quiet. We have to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before the Lord. May God bless you. I hope all the policemen are not here. Because many of us, when a word is being given, we throw it around. Like policemen, we direct it. That is for Tina. That is. But when it comes to the tongue, who doesn't have a tongue? And who hasn't said some? The verse said here, and I'm not preaching again, in chapter 3 of James. It's verse... Five. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. We have caused riots. We have caused misunderstandings. 